this to you all. It is Friday once again, so we can put our feet up, take your pants off, drop your socks, grab your cocks. Because drama time is upon us once more. It has been a hell of a week with so much going on in World of Warcraft. Mythic testing going on, capping being done, decisions made as we had to make the fateful decision in the Shadowlands as to decide on a covenant. If you did not get to see the situation of choosing a covenant that I had to go through this week, by God, by God, was it a whole thing that we had to live through? Was it as dangerous as dealing with the Scissor Man? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. And in fact, after this stream, we're probably, assuming my family doesn't come home during the stream, continuing our playthrough of one of the best games of all time. It goes by the name of Nightcry, and no one listening to this should ever purchase such a game. I have purchased it on your behalf so that you can live through the dreams and the nightmares of the Scissor Man. Okay? <laughs> Fear the Scissor Man, because he comes for you. He walks. He walks and he stalks. I hope you're all feeling absolutely tremendous. I'm feeling good. We're having a little time off World of Warcraft. We've played so much Shadowlands over the last three months. Burnout is a thing as we've basically done the exact same process. Starter quests. I would guess amongst the team we're somewhere in the hundreds of times now of actually just doing the starter four or five hours of making characters. It's time to take a little break. Recharge that engine, get in there and have some fun. Although we will be doing some mythic raid testing tonight. Which may in fact be the end of all raid testing before the Shadowlands actually comes out. It could finish this evening, which would be very, very interesting. Uh, if they decide to do that, considering we've not done any testing at all with legendaries or soulbinds. So I assume they're just going to have a guess, which sounds fun. <laughs> Makes me laugh. Uh, okay, let's get some fun on. So, I want to open tonight this fine evening with the judgment uh last week we had somebody who put forward their case to the court you along with myself declared her guilty guilty as charged for joining a very very low level dungeon a heroic dungeon a heroic shrine of the storm where it was failure upon failure upon failure and it turned out that ultimately, the very first pull of Shrine of the Storm proved impossible. Impossible. And I declared in one foul swoop as the judge of this court that there should be a price to be paid. Penance is owed to every single one of us who listens to Drama Time. And that penance was four Mythic plus sevens. The truly nightmarish world that is pre-level ten Mythic plus. A world that I hope many of you do not stray into too often. <coughs> well, I'm glad to say that our author attempted to pay for her crimes. And she's had to write us a little tale to go along with it. <laughs> Preach and the court! Four Mythic plus seven runs. Four Mythic plus seven runs was the sentence handed down by Justice Preach for my cowardice last week in Heroic. It was a fair sentence for the crime of allowing one appalling Heroic Shrine of the Storms run to sour my entire enthusiasm for World of Warcraft. In fact, I received... All right, behind the curtain time. This isn't Drama Preach talking. This is Mike. I received quite a number of emails, in fact, saying that I was a bad person. And <laughs> that does happen on time to time. Uh, but the it was specifically in reference to a comment I made during this Drama Time story that we took place in last week regarding my accordion analogy. And I explained at the start of the expansion when we're all relatively e uh, equally geared and we're all fighting the very same usually very easy content that the accordion is closed we're all here yet over the course of the expansion of course that accordion extends and it grows and it widens and what you end up with is a lot of play people who are very very at the top end and you also end up with those players unfortunately who are still at the beginning end of the accordion with everyone else lumped nicely in the middle and it's not generally a great idea 
to mix into that area of the game. It's ugly, it's grim, selfish, it's very bitter, and it's uh, a bad thing. Now, some players and some, well, let's just say some viewers, let's put it that way. Some viewers of mine do live at this shallow end of the accordion and didn't like being called out. Unlucky. Uh, so, <clears throat> it was a fair sentence. I logged into the WoW that very evening in order to pay for my crimes. Many, many plus seven runs needed a healer. And I quickly learned. And remember, I've only just returned to the game after several years. I very quickly learned that none of them wanted that healer to be me. Obviously, my 388 item level was a significant barrier. So I had work to do. My character must grow. And I got straight to work. By Saturday afternoon, a combination of world quests, crafting, AH farming had elevated me. To the dizzying powerhouse of a 421 Holy Paladin. <laughs> Choking. Don't email me. If you do, I'm not going to read it. I even found a pair of corrupted braces that increased my versatility by six percentages. I stood in Boring Harbor. Opened that group finder tab again. Ready for big bidness. But nothing. I spent an entire hour getting declined and declined. One run after the other just refused me. Every group demanded 460 or better. Even using my healer discount, I was still at least 20 levels away. Fine then, okay. More gear is required. I checked the dungeon journal and discovered I could obtain 430 gear from plain old mythic dungeons. So, the solution is simple. I adjusted my search parameters and began queuing again. Still nothing. For mythic zero. All of my first rounds of signups declined me. But why? These groups needed healers. Most of them had no item level requirement at all. Why? Why couldn't I get a group? Out of frustration, I turned to the whispers. Explain to me, sir. Your group doth require a healer. I doth provide heals. Why must this be the case? It turns out that it isn't the old item level isn't what the pug leaders are even looking for to weed out the noobs. I was explained that my I.O. score was trash. An I.O. score is something I had never heard of in my entire life. And upon research, I found out that apparently, in order to join dungeons, I needed to do dungeons. And the perpetual cycle confronted me head on. I was about to call it quits. But I remembered something. I remember some words you spoke, Preach. You told me anything below 10 is madhouse time. It's a risk. Do not play at the shitty end of the accordion. It filled me with a sudden confidence. I should try my luck. So I just clicked the plus 10 mother load. My invite came immediately. I panicked. A plus 10? I didn't think they'd actually say yes, and my stomach dropped to the floor. At least I knew the mother load quite well. I knew it was the robot one, with a football boss and a minecart, and fake Mimiron at the end. <laughs> I could do that. Sure, how hard can it be? Well, I was about to find out. In my group, a DK tank, a warrior, and a rep paladin, and... A feral druid. I had learned my lesson, so I didn't say hello. I mean, you can say hello. <laughs> don't, I didn't say, I did, in, below 10, don't say hello. Like, that's crazy, right? You remember, you're in the mad area, okay? You're in the crazy area. It's like, it's, it's the pit of death in there. Don't say hello in there. As you move higher up, though, say whatever you want. It's fine. Meme away. Meme away. You'll be good. 
I knew not to say hello. I just teleported myself to Zuldazar and walked down to that entrance. Summon! Cried the paladin. Who was for some reason in Sholazar Basin. As they appeared in front of me, I couldn't help but gaze at their gear. My god. I had never seen or been in a group with anything quite like it. They were dripping in purples. Their necklaces and capes. They had more item levels than my entire character. You should have seen them glimmering in the light. They were dripping in multiple corruptions. I couldn't even identify half their transmogs. Or any of their mounts. One of them was even riding an actual bee. Can you believe it? I made a tactical play. I stood far away so they couldn't inspect me. <laughs> I made sure that I was wearing my judgment transmog so I would pass as an average paladin. <laughs> Smart. R said the DK. R says the druid. And R says the warrior. And upon my screen, the countdown began. I applied my beacon to the Death Knight. Confirmed my unit frames and mods were working. Braced myself for action. I had never run out of paladins, uh, run out of mana so fast in my entire WoW career. I smashed those spells like my life depended on it. I blew all the cooldowns, and by the end of the second trash pack, all my heals just seemed too slow, too small, too insignificant for such a stellar, corrupted purple group. I should note here that after this run, I did some Googling, and I discovered that Holy Paladins use something called Glimmer that I had never heard of. But I did not have any of it. And I still, to this day, as of writing this story, have not found any, found any of it either. Oh, no. <laughs> no Glimmer. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> The warrior died. I couldn't afford the time or the mana to keep him alive. And he died again and again and again as I was desperately trying to keep the Death Knight alive. I knew the whisper was coming. I knew the message in the chat was inevitable. And then it did appear. Was he to berate me? Was he to say I should be kicked? Was he to call the run? No. Lols. Heals, mate. Or oh, what? You got any healing spells over there, mate? Or oh, what? What are you doing? You're going to heal me, though. Go on. Go on. One heal, though. Go on, mate. You wouldn't. Go on. Press it. He seemed quite okay. Sorry, I replied. I meant it. I'm sorry. I just can't. By the time we reached the football boss, I was so oom. And then I saw the real horror. I wasn't first on healing. I wasn't even second. I was third on the healing meter. Ah, uh, you should drink, said the DK. I didn't have any drinks. Well, how could I forget drinks? I had been so intensely focused on making sure that my add-ons were working, my unit frames were working, I hadn't brought any drinks. Thinking quickly, I mounted my mammoth and bought the biggest drink on the vendor. It did nothing! Nothing. Because the drink had been called, I could feel the eyes of this group just burning into me. Almost out of pity, a trade window opened and the rep paladin handed me some food. I was so grateful I could have kissed him there and then. With my mana topped up, we pulled the boss. It went surprisingly smoothly. Partly, of course, this was the skill of the group who managed to avoid most of the big damage. But as I discovered, that literal knight in shining armor, the rep paladin who had passed me those drinks, he had realized the situation, hadn't said a word, and had taken to completely off healing the entire group. So I could just heal the tank. Saints be praised for this rep paladin. This routine had been established. The rep pally knew his support role and he did it throughout the rest of the run. The group progressed smoothly and wordlessly through the dungeon. 
We beat the rock boss in two attempts. The fire goblin in one. I managed to pull extra packs because I was spamming so hard on my unit frames I didn't see them patrolling. But the group just killed them and moved on. Sure, I was still number three on the healing meter. But nobody cared. The group was fine. We were pushing through at a decent pace. I was enjoying myself. They were supporting me in what I was doing. As we started climbing the hall towards that last boss, I started feeling brave, confident in this group, that they weren't judging me and they were actually helping me. And I fucked up. In my eagerness, I typed, What's this thing? For the first time, the rep paladin, the broest of the bros, spoke up. What thing? This glowy obelisk thing. Ah, oh, shit, said the Death Knight. Uh, said the Druid. And the warrior, who was full of smiles and full of happiness just earlier in the run, gave me the three dots of shame. Of course, your chat knows that the obelisk thing was a plus 10 affix that I had never seen, I'd never heard of. The DK made judgment on me. Whatever. <laughs> we'll do this one and we'll just do the others with the boss. Cool, said the warrior. But the druid gave pause. Do you really want to do three obelisks with these heels? Just going to toss it out there. <laughs> just going to... Just a shot, you know, just going to... Just if, if 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 I'm wrong, say so. But I'm just gonna point out, I like we all know what's going on here, right? Right. So, are you sure? <laughs> I'll admit I was mildly hurt. This is the first time they'd actually pointed out my terrible healing. But the moment we stood in front of the final boss and his three giant buddies, I realised the druid was absolutely correct in what he had said. <laughs> Arr, said the warrior, and arr, said the rep paladin. The druid didn't say a fucking thing. The, D <laughs> the DK said, healer, don't get hit by shit, and pulled. The entire group was dead before my bubble had expired. I had totally started panicking. I had lost track of my mouse. Menus, windows were open all over my goddamn screen. Without saying a word, we rezzed and headed back up the hill. Uh, druid, you should heal, said the DK. Yeah, no pops, said the druid, popping out of cat form. We pulled again, same result. Only this time I had accidentally bopped the DK, so he was the last to die. Lol, bop? Question mark, said the death knight. I just told the truth. I just pressed the wrong button. I didn't know what to do. The warrior once again gave me the three dots of shame. In my heart of hearts and in my mind, I felt like I should just apologize. Just leave the group right there. But preach the memory of your judgment outweighed the shame of my failure. Good! It's okay to fail if you learn. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. It's the worst that's going to get happen. You're going kick, to get kicked from a fucking mythic plus pug. Boo fucking who. Boo who? Because I guess next time you will bring drinks. Am I right? It's fine. It Nothing happens. Nothing. It's fine. As long as you get better. <coughs> I would not retreat to the comfortable end of the accordion. I had shown myself to be a drinkless noob, a shitter, a panicker. But I will not quit. The druid said, it's the last boss. Let's just go back. Sure, says the DK. We retraced our steps, hunting down all the obelisks one by one. I didn't understand how the obelisk portals worked and got lost. But the druid came, gave me a ride on his back. It was, to say, very symbolic of my entire dungeon experience. To be carried exactly where I needed to be. Finally, we faced the boss alone. No R's were declared this time. The DK just ran in and pulled. The boss got absolutely wrecked. 
I knew this boss well and never got hit by the Gatling gun once. I deployed my cooldowns expertly. When I was targeted by the drill, I landed it squarely on one of the bombs like a pro. And after the boss died, I opened the chat. I struggled to find the words to express my gratitude. After some time, I thought of what I wanted to say. I stood tall and I stood proud and I said, Huge, thank you for this run. I'm so glad we made it. I was the only one who was left in the group when that message went out. But perhaps they'll hear this and they'll know. I opened that chest. Inside, an eight Waycrest mana key. Some beautiful echoes of Nihilotha and would you believe it, a 455 corrupted two-handed mace. Why in the fuck did I get a two-handed mace? And then I remembered that in my haste to get geared, I had spent my loot to retribution to help me do world quests faster. I tell you all now, I am yet to do any of my four plus seven dungeons. But you know what? The item level on that two-handed mace helps me get invites to Mythic Zero groups. And I promise you all, Court of Drama Time, I'll get there. I promise. Thank you for reading my stories. <laughs> round of applause! A round of applause! You'll get there. And please, update us when you do. Update us when you do. But thank God you didn't just bow out and quit like so many. Thank the, thank the Jesus that you didn't just quit and turn it off and call it a day. God damn it. God damn it. And please, for the love of God, do whatever you can to get out of those groups. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Escape as quickly as humanly possible. I beg. I beg of you. Get out of there. Praise the drama time. Praise it. Dream of it. Make it work. They are the group. They are the group. <laughs> okay. Uh, we need... Uh, these names come in as we go. So I'll fill them in there. So I'll erase the scissor man for now. And we need a guild name. My wonderful live audience. My court of wonderfully balanced individuals if you could get some na uh, names in here that would be awesome <sighs> the scissor men <laughs> the scissor men it has to be the scissor men yeah i'll go with that it has to be the scissor men <laughs> the scissor men's all right <sighs> we're going full casual never go full casual here we go greetings preacher to ski esteemed members of the court. Allow me to entertain you by regaling you with a short tale about yet another casual guild from my past in WoW that needs to be remembered and needs to be the red flags that you bestow upon your audience. It was mid Wrath of the Lich King. Cast your mind back to a simpler time. Gear was indeed gear. Tier bonuses were it and there was no other bullshit on top of your character. What a fine time to be alive. I had left the guild that I had been raiding with since vanilla because of some heartbreaking drama. I was actually about to leave World of Warcraft entirely, but a real life friend reached out, called me, invited me to join her on her realm. She said she really wanted to play alongside me again and that she would pay for the realm transfer herself. In truth, I wasn't ready to give up on World of Warcraft, but losing your friends is a rough road to travel. I accepted. As an unrelated aside, I came from a PvE realm. Her realm was an alliance side PvP realm. And allow me to stress that anyone who suggests that world PvP takes some sort of skill is a fucking arsehole. <laughs> it was extraordinarily rare that I saw anything other than 10 horde players chasing and ganking one alliance player. My new guild, the Scissormen, 
were small, cheerful, casual. They seemed like a breath of fresh air for compared to what I was used to. My RL friend and her ex-boyfriend. Sadly, they weren't online as much as I would like. The guild master, though. Savage. The guild master Savage was an alumni and associate of her university. The officers were composed of the guild master's friend, DG, and his wife, Daddio. <coughs> Excuse me. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. We're full casual. I figured this would be one big happy family. So many people who know each other, IRL, husband, wives, friends, everything you could want from a family environment. The guildmaster emphasized that not only were we casual, but when referring to the, gu the guild, the word casual should be used in caps to emphasize that that is what we are all about. Up until this point, I had experience with only two World of Warcraft guilds. One on the Horde and one on the Alliance. That I'd actually raided something. The guilds I had raided with weren't world first competitors. So surely, I also qualified as being a casual. No. <laughs> no. Not at all. <laughs> not in any way. It doesn't go world first. Everybody else is casual. Okay. Accordion. Accordion. Yeah. Stretch Armstrong. All the way along. Okay. All the way along. It's not, yeah, it doesn't go as soon as you hit 1.1%. You're uber casual, okay? Don't buy into the forum bullshit. Up until this point, <clears throat> I thought the guild would probably be very similar to what I'd had in the past as they weren't super competitive, right? They're not super competitive. I know that you likely have alarm bells ringing in your head. Th this whole situation. But I didn't know any better. Cut me some slack. I had no experience yet. I hadn't watched many drama times. I didn't know what to look for. I couldn't see the hidden dangers. Lurking just below the surface of this guild. And to be honest with you. Trouble didn't show its ugly head. Until the infamous Argent Tournament Raid. Which was good by the way. It just followed Ulduar. Which was legitimately amazing. We had been working on the second to last boss in Ulduar. When the Argent Tournament came out. That's <clears throat> It's a big monster thing. My memory is fuzzy about the whole thing. But I believe we only ever killed the second to last boss. Once. When our leaders made that infamous forum post. We are going to stop with Alduar. And move on to the Argent Tournament raid. I was pissed. We've been working at Alduar for so fucking long. And we're not even going to kill. No, not even see yogg -Sarot. We never did a single pull. But who am I to complain of this casual guild? I'm not in charge. I'm not a leader. I had little to say in this matter. We couldn't defeat the very first boss. We stood before... What were they called? The animals? The beasts of Northrend? Whatever the fuck it was called. And beat our heads on a wall. <coughs> It was on one of our many progress raid nights when our guild master, the prestigious Savage, turned up on a brand new character, a mage, instead of his typical geared hunter. I thought it surprising, but of course, got on with it. He's the GM after all. It wasn't until he brought another new character the next raid, a warrior instead of a mage, that I decided to download a damage meter. Something seemed wrong. The damage was bad. Very bad. His DPS was so low that you'd be forgiven for thinking that we had brought a naked boosty along for the ride. I surreptitiously sidled alongside him. Let me demonstrate what happened. Gave him the old inspect. And what do I find? No flask. All greens. Leveling greens. This is unconscionable. 
We had all geared our characters for progress. We had all agreed amongst the raiders to bring flasks and potions. And we can't even kill for now the third raid in a row, the very first boss of the raid. And now GM, our glorious leader Savage, have brought not one, but two undergeared alts to this raid. I'm not one to lose my fucking shit, but I was outraged. To me, this showed an appalling lack of respect for the fellow raiders who had joined this raid. So I sidled up to one of the officers, DG, and protested. We were struggling on this boss. This was only making it harder. And the response I got, I'm sure you can predict. We are fucking casual! This is how we do things here! Well then, I thought. Truth be told, I had never before in World of Warcraft had our guild description used as a shield for being a cunt. <laughs> it summarized bad behavior and worse manners. I was appalled. But what to do? I had left an extremely painful situation in my previous guild. And my mostly missing real life friends still played on this realm and were a part of this guild. They were all scissor men together. I felt like my hands were tied, at least for now. But the raiding situation started to get worse. DG and Daddio, the other officers, made a forum post. For those of you who played back then, pre-Discord, pre-all those things, will remember the inevitable forum posts that you dreaded seeing. The title of that post, of course, Raid Changes. Raid nights were now flexible, depending on when the officer team felt like raiding. They were either going to be on a Tuesday or Thursday, and maybe Sunday sometimes. <laughs> We're fucking casual, alright? We're fucking casual! I'm not joking you, this was typed out for us. Every week they were going to randomly choose between Tuesday or Thursday for the first raid night of the week, and Sunday raids were on a permanent to-be-announced status, but players should try and make themselves available for all three. I still, to this day, cannot explain to you the logic behind this idea, but there's more! Brace yourselves. We were also to reserve lockouts for the guild. Now I had a huge problem with this. I attended classes and I couldn't make Tuesdays at all. And I could only make Thursdays if I had days of notice to prepare for it to move stuff around. I brought this up with Daddio and was told... This is a more casual fucking approach to raiding. Predetermined raids are what fucking nerds do. Are you a fucking nerd? I'll fucking cut you if you bring this up again. <laughs> I was shot. I was crushed. I just wanted to, you know, do some raids. These new absurd rules, lockout rules, literally meant that I couldn't raid with the guild. Like, I was straight up being removed from the raid team. Late one night, when, by chance, it happened that none of the officers or guild master were online, I was commiserating about the weird raid rules with a warrior. Let's go with... Uh... Oh, yeah, let's go with... We haven't had him in ages. Death Scythe. Yeah. <laughs> death, death Scythe. Let's get it right. <clears throat> he was forced to DPS. He admitted that he too 
can't raid with these new rules. Like, I literally just can't. And neither could one of his friends who only plays on weekends. Now, Preacher! I admit, it was a long time ago. My, my memory is a little fuzzy on the very, very specifics. But I do know one thing. I definitely started the shitstorm. <laughs> I don't remember the exact details. But what I do know is that I definitely started the shitstorm that came. <laughs> I definitely did. In my old guild, when the officers couldn't be bothered to gear up new recruits, I was the one who organized and led AQ20, Karazan runs. I knew that if you had at least one person willing to take responsibility, and people who are willing to accept organization and instruction, then you can get a raid going. It doesn't take much to get that raid underway. So that night, I mentioned that it was a shame that we didn't have more people to just, I don't know, make a team too. Wah, wah, wah. <clears throat> the real shame that Deathside mentioned that hey that might be a good idea because we can't raid with the guild's raid times but we want to stay in the guild so let's just make a team do with the people who can't he said his wife would like to come because she liked playing with him and that his buddy would certainly be interested because he can't raid in team one anymore he also knew friends who were really good players but they wouldn't mind either the fire rised. The match had been struck. I did make one fateful error here. You may ask yourself, did I tell any of the guild's officers, guild master, or those leading the raids that I was starting a team too? And the answer to that, of course, is no, I fucking didn't. I didn't say a goddamn word. A week later on Friday night, Team 2 entered Argent Tournament Raid. Death Scythe strapped a shield, which is what he'd been wanting to do forever, and I healed. Death Scythe had a tank friend and some others who wanted to raid. The raid was almost evenly split between Outsiders and Scissormen. We blasted through more than half the raid in one night. There's only five bosses in there, right? So you did three bosses. I mean, you, you're exaggerating a bit. Like, it's not like you cleared half of Alduar in one night, right? There's not even any trash. I don't want to shit on what you did, right? I'm, I don't want to do that. But, fact of the matter is, you did three bosses. Okay? Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. More than half is three. But it's still good. It's still much more progress than you did before. All right, we'll accept that. It's fine. <clears throat> it felt so good. It felt so fucking good to be raiding. And not only that, raiding while giving each other respect. A bit of fun. Having a good time. Knowing people, knowing fights, people using consumables. People who weren't out to just rise their own individual EP. We heard nothing about our raiding escapades because Fortune smiled on us. And for that first week, only the, pe the people participating in that clandestine raid that was smudged together with randoms and members of the guild were actually online during both of the maybe raid days. <clears throat> but on the second week, though, it did hit the fan. <laughs> <laughs> on the second week, though, it did hit the fan. <laughs> on Friday, we just quietly invited everyone who... We didn't want to call it Team do team 2 because it had certain connotations to it. What do you mean? Nothing wrong with being in Team 2. So we called ourselves the B-Raid. And we just sort of sauntered off to the raid instance. No mention of it in guild chat. No big deal. You know, not making a fuss. We got caught on the third boss. What in the f fuck are you doing? Appeared to me in bright pink. It was daddy -o. 
I distinctly remember her side coming across in all caps. I'm in a raid? I told her. Apparently she had already asked somebody else and I had been selected as the ring leader. That's not a guild raid, is it? You're supposed to save your lockouts for the guild. So why do you have people from our guild in your raid? It's... I mean, t technically, <laughs> and I know this is a snarky response. I know this is a snarky response. It is a guild raid, really, because half of the people in this raid are scissor men. So, I mean, technically speaking, this is a guild raid. So the lockout is technically going to the guild, if you think about it, right? Just pop your brakes and think about it. Technically, this is a guild raid. You know what I'm talking about. This, the officers didn't make that fucking raid, did they? Are you trying to take over? Came glaring back at me in the pink text. Of course I knew what she was talking about. I'm not a fucking idiot. And I also knew that I was uh, a controlling bullshit power play by me. <laughs> by the officers. <laughs> it was a controlling bullshit power play by the officers. I genuinely remember this detail. I really couldn't be fucked with their shit. I remember that quite specifically. I saw a big grin kind of came over my face. And I just typed back, I can't make your random raid times. Nobody in my group can make your random raid times. You're not losing anything because quite literally, we can't raid with you anymore because you changed the rules. Besides, remember one thing. You guys are putting all these strict rules on us, but we're a casual guild. Think about that. There was a long, long moment before the response came. You betrayed us. Every single last one of you is a bunch of traitors. I was getting tired of the hysterical pink text that was now bawling that we were all a bunch of hate-filled, evil, backstabbing betrayers. And the occasional stern whisper was flying in from DG on the back of this. I whispered Deathside that I was getting a lot of shit from Daddy O and Co. He whispered back that he was getting the same from DG. Oh, well, at least I wasn't alone. In voice chat, we got a question from the other tank about what was taking so long since we had actually stopped <laughs> the raid so that Deathside and myself could be spammed with whispers at this point. So Deathside piped up that we're getting a bunch of flack from the officers in our guild. That's how his friend immediately interjected that it was a shame that we weren't in a different guild. Considering we can't even raid with them anyway. The other tank pounced on the opening immediately and mentioned, I'll join. I, this is kind of fun. I like this guild. Before I knew it, the lone voice became a chorus that we liked our new raid team. It was full of good people. We were having fun. Let's just make it a guild. So we all just agreed to G quit when no one was around. Pussies. Guilty. Why? Why wait, you cowards? Cowards! You make me sick. You come in here with all your big talk? Like you were grinning? I'll do whatever I want. Casual guild, remember? And you can't even be bothered to fucking quit on the spot? You make me sick. Yes, we're a bunch of sneaky G quitters, I know. I always felt that it made for less drama if you quit when there was no one there to see you leave. Do you not think you already caused the drama? <laughs> Interesting. By the next day, we were in a new guild together. The new guild stayed together until it slowly faded away over the next expansion. But we progressed where the scissor men could not. Thank you for listening to my story and maybe it will encourage someone else to be proactive about Im an imperfect situation. <laughs> Curious question to my audience. How many of you are in guilds that you hate right now? Don't throw yourself under the bus. <laughs> Don't do that. But how many of you are in guilds right now that you can't stand? <laughs> right, I don't trust any of you. Fuck off. Half of my guild just replied. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. All make a guild together then. All make a guild together. Jackasses. <laughs> Just go make your own guild. I don't fucking care. Do what you want. Get out of here. Make a guild together. There's all these people here. Have fun. Uh, we'll keep Savage. We didn't use that name enough. Uh, we used DG and Daddy O. Fair all about times for our next story. Um, <clears throat> we're going back 12 years here. So we need uh, a warrior, main tank, and tanking officer who can be Savage. We need a new guild master who we will have. Ba -ba -da -ba. Oh, lots of new $10 Patreons this, this time. Thank you guys very much. Let's go with Hanson's. Welcome aboard. Uh, and I think that's it. We just need another name of the guild that's not the um, Scissormen. Let's have something else. <laughs> the title of the story... Hold on, I copy-pasted it. It's called, I think... The Stupidest DKP System Ever. <laughs> I can't wait. Loot Hall's coming up with creative DKP systems are my jam. You are my jam. I love you. Uh, come on a chest. We've had that so many times. Uh, the pubes. Really, Jersey? <laughs> really? Uh, boy fun DVD player? Yeah, boy fun actually makes a lot of sense. If you missed it earlier today, my wife bought a portable DVD player for her camping trips. I know. Don't ask. Uh, but it was made by the the esteemed company Boyfun, B-O-I-F-U-N. Boyfun, for all your portable DVD needs. Wonderbar. Should be wonderful. <laughs> okay. A long time listener of Drama Time. I love it. Hopefully you find my story enjoyable. I'm sure we will. This is the tale of the stupidest loot drama, the chain reaction to the destruction of what was a solid, solid guild. Ah, loot. <sighs> Loot. Anybody had any loot drama? Like, for the last, like, I don't know, two expansions? What would you have loot drama of, over? <laughs> Love me loot. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Now, this occurred last tier. Over what? Mounts? Oh, yeah, mounts do include loot, I suppose. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. It's only because he didn't get any drops. What, on personal loot? <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> oh, Vita caused some drama? Really? But you're farming it, right? I guess who gets the first one, I guess. Vita's boring as well. It's such a boring trinket. Whatever. Uh, I don't know. This tale is some, it's the most ridiculous loot drama that chain reacted and destroyed a solid guild. It happened more than 12 years ago to this day. So some of my details are fuzzy, but the main points stick in my mind to this day. I would love if the court could decide guilty or innocent regarding my behavior. Okay, so the judgment at the end of the story is on our author's behavior. That's the judgment. That's the case before us. It is the case of the stupidest DKP system. During Vanilla, I raided with a decent core of people who were saddled with a raging monster of a GM and raid leader. As you can imagine, clicks formed within the guild and it burst during Nax Ramus with mass G quits due to the GM's attitude and treatment of players. But that's not the tale today. It does set the stage, however, for the current story. I spent the rest of Vanilla in a casual guild with one of those clicks that I connected with best. With the Burning Crusade starting soon, we of course all wanted to raid. And absolutely none of us wanted to be a guild master. <laughs> or deal with recruiting people. As such, we took the step that everybody should apply to different guilds so we could just talk socially via a chat channel. You fucking cowards, honestly. <laughs> you absolute cowards. <laughs> I would rather we didn't play together. <laughs> that we have to deal with running a guild. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I had switched my Dwarf Priest from Holy to Shadow, and though the class's DPS was weak... No? What? Shadow in the Burning Crusade? Oh, you're a bad player. Or oh, were a bad player. Were a bad player. Were. Shadow was shit hot. 
in the Burning Crusade. From the very start, by the way. <clears throat> he said end of classic. Did he say the TBC was starting? If I'm wrong, that's fine. Okay. If it's the end of uh, vanilla, then fine. I had switched my Dwarf Priest from Holy to Shadow, and though the class's DPS was weak, every raid ran at least one for mana. It's the Burning Crusade. Bad player. Spotted. Easy. Luckily, Boyfun, <laughs> the number one vanilla guild on our server, was lacking a Shadow Priest. My app was quickly accepted. The rest of my friends ended up in other places, so I was alone in the brand new guild, Boyfun. Everything in Boyfun started out fine. <laughs> I was one of two Shadow Priests in the guild and earned a consistent raid spot by performing well. The guild master Savage was a very down-to-earth and chill guy. Everything seemed quite positive, except for one thing. It's not B-O-Y fun, it's B-O-I fun. Boy fun, like that. Boy, like my boy. <clears throat> the main tank and tanking officer, Hansen's, Refused to speak on voice comms. Oh, fuck that. No, if you're tanking, you're talking. Fuck off, man. He or she, I never knew which, communicated solely through in-game chat. Since Savage was so chillaxed, there wasn't a lot of voice-based leadership. In hindsight, there should have been a warning that the guild's dynamic might be a bit off. Shot calling came mostly... During the raid, this is how Nihilum used to raid. Where's Kenny? How does this actually work? Shot calling on the spot came mostly through tight in game raid warnings from Savage. Buy a microphone, bro. Honestly. Right? This is how Nihilum used to raid. In vanilla, right? This is how they used to do it. I'm sure of it. They didn't use, or they had voice comms, but it wasn't mandatory or something. I don't know. Fucking crazy. <coughs> Honestly, it was impressive. It was impressive that Boyfun progressed as well as it did in vanilla, given that the main tank would stop taking actions and start typing for three to five seconds to change direction in the raid chat during fights. Though maybe that speaks more to how easy vanilla was than it does the skill of the players. I'm saying nothing on that. <laughs> There was definitely a few wipes due to people missing instructions in game chat. Or Savage messing up a mechanic while he was typing. Luckily, I am comfortable speaking to a group and am reasonably knowledgeable about the game. Therefore, I slowly, couldn't help it, started falling into the role of shot caller. At first, it was just echoing what Savage said in the chat to make sure people, if they hadn't read it, would hear the command. But it quickly turned into just making the calls directly and freed up the need to type things out. It worked out well. Boyfun held the first spot on the server, and by the time we hit Black Temple, I had officially been promoted to officer and raid leader. The guild had very few officers. The only ones I remember were myself, Savage, Hansons, though I'm sure there were others. One odd thing to note was how opposite Savage and Hansons were. Hansons sociable polite relaxed i would describe him as a people person players joined because they got along with him they trusted him if he was there it was gonna go well savage though is big bidness all about the bidness nothing but bidness doesn't want to be a friend doesn't care what happened at the weekend bidness They treated raiding like a military exercise. And I'm sure that's how Savage ended up in a leadership role, since Hansons lacked the, you know, the personality stuff. Without at least some structure, it's hard to progress. Though I'm pretty sure Savage took it a bit too seriously. <clears throat> I should mention, Boyfun at the time used a zero-sum DKP loot system with fixed prices for items. While not perfect, it was fair and objective. If you've not used zero zum DKP because you're not a boomer, then what it means is the player with the most points gets the item and that price is deducted from them and distributed evenly to all the other members of the raid so that there goes up and the bench when the item is awarded. 
The system ensured that loot drama was virtually non-existent. Though sometimes loot was not distributed as effectively as a loot council would. Now, you may remember that the trash in the Black Temple actually dropped some good shit. Really good shit. Specifically, rings that were prized by many classes. Perhaps lesser known was that Teron Gorfreen's trash was soloable by some classes. So after our raid night, if Gorfiend was still alive, I would stay up and I'd just kill some trash just so I can get my ring that I wanted, right? I'm not asking anything of the guild. I'm not asking anybody to take part. I'm just going to go where on my lonesome and just farm some trash. I, of course, didn't kill any bosses. I didn't share the lockout with any non-guildies. I just killed some trash. Zoned out so they respawned, did it again. I made no secret of what I was doing and welcomed anyone who wanted to come with me for the loot. Come along. It's fine. If there were any ranged DPS, they could help. If there were another class, I asked them to just sit back and collect the loot. It's all good. If you're curious, there's a video and he's liked a video of people doing this. It was probably the most least, the least efficient method ever discovered to obtain gear. <clears throat> Is it though? Oh, there's a video there. The worst things people have done to get gear. Mm, BFA is not efficient because it's a loot pinata. It can it can be efficient through accidents. LFR is one. If LFR is definitely up there as one of the least efficient ways of obtaining gear. I imagine LFR is probably at the top. LFR is pretty horrific. The amount of time invested versus the reward is terrible. Professions are relatively efficient, especially these days. Besides jewel crafting, which is just obscene. I thought it was neat though. I was having fun. And there weren't a lot of other ways to get upgrades for my character at the time because we had Biss. I never imagined the guild destroying drama which would be caused by my very public, very welcoming and very open farming of trash loot. But it started. It started when by some miracle I got the ring I wanted to drop during one of these trash runs. I was very pleased. It took hours of killing one mob every 10 minutes to get this. And I felt the joy that only purple pixels can provide. That sense of accomplishment that all those hours had eventually paid off. And I got a reward for it. I linked it in the guild chat and received many congratulations. I didn't think much more of it until the next day. When a post appeared in the officer board of the guild forums. Um... You do know you have to pay DKP for that ring, though. Right? Shit ain't free. Now, I know nothing of Savage's personality. Despite raiding three nights a week with them for the better part of a year, their lack of socialization made it hard to distinguish them from a wooden block. I thought they might have been joking. Do they even tell jokes? Are they aware of jokes? I didn't know. I wondered how would DKP even work for this? How could it be divided amongst the other people in the raid when there are no people in the raid? I was on my own. So did I charge myself and then give myself all the DKP that I spent? What are we talking about here? I responded fairly neutrally. I didn't want to embarrass myself in case this wooden block was, in fact, trying to be funny. So I said something along the lines of this. <laughs> yeah, cool, man. I'll charge myself the DKP and I'll pass it back to myself. But I wasn't that snarky with it. I can't remember how I worded it, but I essentially said, okay, I'll charge myself and then distribute it back to myself if you want it to be on the list, you know? So it was recorded. <clears throat> The response, of course, made it very clear that they are absolutely not fucking joking at all. Bro, this is loot. This is Black Temple. We're a guild. We're a society. Get your shit together. The forum is lost to time, but here is the gist of the response from Savage. 
Of course you owe the guild. Do you think you can access that trash without the guild having cleared the bosses up until that trash? Not every class can even do what it is that you were doing. And you were only there because of the efforts of this guild. You owe DKP to everyone that was in the previous raid since they are the ones that cleared all the bosses and all the trash up to that point for you so you could go and farm on your own. I, I mean, there's a point there. There is something there. I understood what he was saying. I didn't agree with it, though. I was the one who was doing all the farming. It's the most boring thing ever. Everybody was welcome to come along and get it. It wasn't like it was going to die at any other point because we'd stop raiding. Maybe an arrangement could be made that anyone who did help sometimes and kill some of these mobs could get some DKP points. I mean, I really didn't care that much. It's the principle of the motherfucking matter. It's the principle of the thing. Even then, though, that would redistribute DKP unfairly, as not everyone could even join during this out-of-raid activity. At best, it was like three people once, usually one to two. Also, in order to have a chance to solo this trash, I had to get lucky. Akama had to be dead, but Gorfin had to be alive. Since we had progressed past Gorfin quickly, it was really rare that he would live past the first raid night anyway. I was kind of relying on us having a shit raid to even have a chance to do this. For weeks, this hadn't even been possible to try. <laughs> to be clear, to you, Mike, and the audience, I realize now, literally as I'm fucking typing this and going back over it in my mind, how dumb this all is. The DKP meant fuck all to me. <laughs> I could have just gone, okay, and <laughs> just moved on with my life. In fact, if Savage had simply asked me to pay DKP or suggested that we had a policy for the future, I don't think I would have given a flying fuck about this thing. They didn't, though. It was demanded of me. It was expected of me. It was forced on me. And you know what? Fuck that shit. I am not going to stand for it. It also bothered me that they knew I and others had been doing this for literally weeks at this point and had not mentioned it until someone actually got a drop. Unfortunately, Hansen's passiveness was no help here. He could have been the defining point. Three officers, one on either side, with one in the middle to make the judgment call. He responded in the most useless possible way. You both have interesting points. Round of applause for that man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the next few raids went fine. We continued progressing, but the topic was still raging in our officer forum. We all knew that the rest of the guild didn't need to deal with this situation. Just as I really didn't want to. But we were getting no closer to a solution. Savage and I had each dug a huge trench for each other. And we weren't going fucking anywhere. I firmly started to believe with my soul at this point. That being charged for DKP for spending time outside of raid farming for myself is about the dumbest loot rule I could think of. Savage refused to drop the point that the rest of the guild deserved compensation for allowing me what he now called the privilege of being able to farm. Lots of compromises were thrown about. Maybe I should pay gold to the guild bank to rent the lockout. What the fuck are we doing at this point? <laughs> what are we doing? Perhaps DKP should be split amongst the entire guild, including non-raiders, so that they had stuff. What would be the most fair? Savage and I each stood fast atop the philosophical hills we intended to die on. Hansons continued to try and defuse the situation without really getting involved. It resulted in no success. It's been years. I do not remember who blacked out the sun. But somehow the dispute became public. It spilled into the guild. At some point frustration had overrun its course and one of us had let slip the point of contention and very very quickly the fire spread 
the entire guild was involved. The split of opinion? In my favour. Balls in my court. But you motherfuckers, it was not unanimous. It was not unanimous. It was about 70-30. Guild chat, discussion forums, voice comms during trash clears and raids all became debate hubs. Memers took over that every time a piece of trash loot dropped, they said they should get it for free. Maybe they should pay the guild bank. Lol, lol, lol. But no one was budging from their official disposition. <clears throat> of course it had to end. And it finally did. When our guild master, our leader, Savage, made an ultimatum. Either you pay DKP to the raid for that ring, or I am G quitting. I will not play with selfish people like yourself. It was a serious threat. Losing the main tank would be incredibly damaging to the guild. It also risked losing a few other people too who stood by Savage. I didn't want to see the guild destroyed, but I also couldn't back down on my principles. Clearly, Savage and I were not going to see eye to eye. I made the decision for my friends. For the rest of the raid team. I decided to end it on my own terms. I reached out to my old buds from Vanilla. Most of them had, by now, migrated to a number two guild on the server. That guild was one boss behind Boyfun, and had many of my old friends in it. You want a Shadow Priest? They said, yeah, cool. No problem. I drafted a forum post, a forum post to Boy Fun, explaining that I was sorry. I never meant for this to happen. I thought it would be cool if we had stronger geared characters. If one dropped when we were normally raiding, it wouldn't need to go to me anymore. I didn't want to push people to try and trash, and I did it on my own time, and I invited anybody who wanted to come along, even if they couldn't help. I was playing this game to progress, have fun, and I didn't want to deal with this anymore. I'd be moving to the role of a regular raider in a different guild. I wished everyone luck, and I G quit. Most people wished me well. They expressed sadness that I was leaving. But there were no hard feelings. Even Hansen spoke with me on comms and empathized with my situation. He understood why I was leaving and told me that no bridges had been burned. I was welcome to reapply in the future if the situation ever changed. Only one person expressed a negative sentiment. Savage. Savage responded to my forum post with just one word. Traitor. They all sent me an in-game mail saying simply, Traitor. Before placing me on ignore. The irony I thought of threatening to G quit as the main tank and then calling me a traitor for quitting must have been missed. Or perhaps I didn't understand the Savage's position as well as I thought I did. Unfortunately, friends, for boy fun, things didn't work out well. The drama had upset a lot of people. Buried feelings of frustration had now boiled up. While losing a main tank is bad, so is losing your guild's raid leader. Most of the newer players who hadn't been in the guild with Savage in charge did not enjoy the silent return to text-driven raid leadership. They started struggling to reclear bosses that were previously on farm. They began to bleed players. Hansen's went full CBA and went casual. He passed the GM role to Savage. Boy fun. Never killed Illidan. Savage never ever to this day has taken me off ignore. And luckily, most of Boyfun's players found their homes in other raiding guilds. I still keep in touch with them to this day. The story was a bit happier for me, though. The guild I ended up in is one I am still in to this day. We maintained a number one, two, one or two position on the server throughout the middle of Mists of Pandaria when age and real-life commitments led us into transitioning to a more casual guild. We still raid together. Once a week for three hours, we still get ahead of the curve every tier. We haven't had to actively recruit players since the Cataclysm. We're bros. We're squad. Meeting up once or twice a year, IRL. Even though we live thousands of miles away. Best of all, I met my wife through this guild. And we're celebrating our 10th anniversary soon. Nonetheless, I still wonder and hopefully you can bring conclusion to this story. Should I have paid DKP for that ring? To the court 
I'm not in the middle. <sighs> in the trial of Arthur versus Bifun. In the situation of DKP versus Ring, we find not guilty in favor of the Arthur. You should not have paid DKP for that ring. In fact, the guild should have celebrated you putting your extra effort in. Just as those of us out there who cannot play too much outside of raiding. And there are many people here who can't do that. Fully respect those who play their ass off in M+. Getting massive amounts of gear. Making it far easier to guild the entire team. We salute you, sir. We salute you. Going out of your way to obtain some trash loot that nobody could have gotten. Well played. Well played. And plus, your raid team having more gear that isn't being taken away from other people is a good thing! As Loz likes to put it, oh no, my guildie's got loads more DPS. What a bummer. <laughs> what a bummer. Indeed, it's a team effort. It is a team effort. Ladies and gentlemen, that does bring us to the end of drama time for today. Yes, it does. And for this week. <sighs> You're missing part of your chest. You should have that looked at. I should, because it's Slimer from the Ghostbusters. That does bring us to the end of that. For the rest of us, I think... Yes. I'll be taking two minutes. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we will be continuing our fun playthrough of Nightcry <laughs> with the Scissor Man. So we will be doing that in a few minutes. But for the rest of you who are into WoW and drama time, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Please do something cool. Have fun. And I'll be uh, back with you on your screens probably tomorrow. If you've got beta, I know not everyone has beta. Don't shit on me. Uh, we might be trying to put a normal run together for the new raid. If you want to check it out and try out some new classes in a relaxed, casual atmosphere, really casual, uh, then be around. I'll try and sort it out for tomorrow. <laughs> and we can do that together. All right. Scissor man cometh. So I'm just going to update this and get a fresh drink. The scissors. <laughs> Have a great weekend, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm just going to update the game. And hopefully the game is still open. This game doesn't even have an icon. I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> it changes back to our scissor man theme as well. I don't know if Chris made a new one. I don't think he did. So it should be uh, this one. Yeah. Awesome. Let's hope and pray, ladies and gentlemen, if we are lucky. <laughs> it's still there. 